This is Aussie Mac Zone. We'll cover everything Apple, including Macs, iPhones, iPads, and more. All this from an Aussie perspective. Sit back, relax, and insert yourself into the zone. The Aussie Mac Zone. Hello world and welcome to show 245 Aussie Max Zone. 245, we're getting up there. Um, and tonight's sponsors, ithelptou.com.au and aussietechradio.com. And we have tonight young Zahn. How are you getting on, mate? I'm fantastic, Michael. How are you? Very good, thank you. Very good. And Garth, our little Queensland counterpart. How are you, my friend? <laughs> <laughs> a bit more of the little would be good. Right? Wouldn't be getting in trouble for not losing enough weight. <laughs> no, I'm doing good. I'm doing good. Excellent. Excellent. Thank you for turning up again. It was great. I oh, know. You never know. <laughs> you never know. Uh, our Aussie Apple ramblings this week start with Mac Trust reports digital music news reporting Apple Music United States subscriber numbers have surpassed Spotify's US subscriber count. The source, a US-based major distributor, shared a report detailing the subscriber tallies of several streaming music services, including Apple Music, Spotify, Ti what is it, Tidal? It's gone out anyway, hasn't it? And, mm -hmm. <laughs> and Sirius XM. Uh, that report now ranks Apple Music as first in the United States, at least among primary on-demand music streaming services. The report says both Apple Music and Spotify boast over 20 million subscribers in the United States, with Apple just a hair ahead of Spotify. The exact subscriber figures were reportedly withheld on request of the source to protect the source's confidentiality. In February, it was reported that Apple was gaining subscribers at a faster rate than Spotify, and Apple's US-based subscriber growth was believed to be around 5%, compared to Spotify's 2% growth rate. And based on those figures, it was projected that Apple Music would pass its major rival in US subscriber numbers this summer. As far as global subscriber numbers go, Spotify still maintains a comfortable lead with around 70 million paying compared to Apple's 45 million. And Spotify has an additional 90 million free tier users and as Apple's estimated five to 10 free. So yeah, 90 million users, that's a lot, isn't it? Just, um, it's a hell of a lot. Yeah, yeah massive. <laughs> <laughs> Which is why, um, yeah, the, the artists get upset a bit, don't they? Because that's a lot of money going down the tube for them. Yeah, yeah. I guess per stream, that's still fairly, you know, you might have that many people. That's 10 bucks a month. Yeah. A lot of people listen to a lot of music. So I, I, it's hard to see how all of that washes out. Um, you yeah. just leave, leave it on, don't you? Well, you can do, yeah. <laughs> just leave it there. Yeah. yeah. For nothing. No. Pretty much, yeah. Yeah. Um, Sirius XM, isn't that, that's like satellite radio. I think it's strange yeah. to put that in the same group because I don't, I didn't know it had a non-demand component. Um, and it's, not... it's paid based, I think is bigger than like, it's like 30 or something like that. Yeah. 30 million. So it's sort of a different, I would have thought it was a different uh, category then. It's still um, streaming, so. isn't it? Yeah. yeah isn't but... it? <laughs> it's just satellite radio, but you've got to pay to be a member. Or... Yeah. So in other words, it, it's like, you know, Air, over the air TV, in that you just get what you're given. There's heaps of stations. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. Um, and isn't so. There's no pay for view, though. Yeah. So this radio station. Sorry, I, I'm misunderstanding. Is it a radio station or you're paying to use it? Is, or is it both? It's both. So, well, my understanding of it anyway, and who really cares because it's an American service that we don't get or want. <laughs> it's a, yeah, cool. I'm not paying for a radio a, station. Yeah, it's a satellite. <laughs> Satellite service, like like pay TV, where you, yep. you pay your premium and you get a crap load of TV stations. Same thing for radio. Okay. So um, across nation, you know, I think their thing was, you know, no, where to, no matter where you are in the country, you can get your favorite radio stations, basically. Yep. And they had their big names. Oh, 
which we would have heard of, but I can't think of, if you know what I mean. Yeah. <laughs> um, and they had like, I think they've got like 30 million subscribers, but it's not on demand like Spotify or Apple Music or anything like that. Yeah. Um, by the same token, I might be just full of, you know, S star, 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 star. <laughs> I might have the whole thing wrong. I just thought it was weird that you had that. Well, the the, the article had Sirius XM in that same list of providers with Tidal and Spotify. You know, I just think and, yeah. Because it is a streaming service. It's just, it streams. Yeah. But they, there's more, they've got more subscribers, I thought, than Apple Music or Spotify. Yeah. They're not paid for, you know, it's not on demand. Yeah. You get what you yeah. get. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway. Moving on. <laughs> Bit of an irrelevant sidetrack there. <laughs> Sorry, guys. I, I just, yeah, I was sort of misunderstood, but we don't even get that stupid radio station here anyway, so it's fine. <laughs> yeah. I don't have to understand. That's, That's right. right. Move on. Yeah, all my fault. See, this is what you happen when you get me back. <laughs> uh, Take you now, down unnecessary side paths. Here's a good one iPhone 8 tops latest best-selling smartphone list and iPhone 10 comes in third. Oh, it's doomed, Michael. The iPhone it, 10 is doomed. It must be. Um, I wonder what uh, Mr. Cook says about that because, you know, he has been saying it's always been the best-selling phone. But um, anyway, 9 to 5 Mac reports, according to new data from Counterpoint Research, and this one's got a slides on, um, yep. According to new data, uh, Apple locked in the best-selling smartphone title during May of 2018. Mm, did it? Uh, I've got I've got the figures here written on the slide, and the Apple iPhone 8 2.4 percent, with Samsung Galaxy S9 Plus at also 2.4 percent. Ah, yes. But two point four one percent, and then uh, third tie. Um, but Apple's we, iPhone, uh, yeah, sorry. The, in the Apple, uh, so you got the Apple uh, X or ten. Uh, mm. Two, yes, I know it's ten. I was just smart ass. <laughs> um, <laughs> is two point three percent. Yeah. Uh, then uh, in fifth place, we've got uh, the oh, Apple four. Eight, the Apple Eight Plus. Uh, what 2.1 percent also again matching the Galaxy S9 at 2.1 percent. <laughs> so there you go, and then the rest of the phones don't matter, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> pretty much. Hey, eh? so that 0.3 percent difference, uh, you know, I, Apple may still be making more on the 10 overall. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, true, might have more, true. more profit on yeah. the 10 than the 8. Yes, true. I forget about that. That the way he was reading that. Yeah, um, they attribute the success of the the new success to um, some new ads that they've been pushing out, and including its "How to Shoot on iPhone" campaign, focused on devices camera technology. But what makes the iPhone eight success all the more notable is the fact that we're looking down the barrel at a, of a trio of new iPhones coming in just over two months. The constant rumours and speculation don't seem to be having a cannibalisation effect on the last generation of devices, though. So I think that's very good. Yeah. Well, yeah. <laughs> um, I'm, I'm glad it's so wrapped up in the in the in the news and the rumours and so forth. You you never know how much is it hitting the main population who are actually buying this stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and maybe not that much. Yeah. No, because you I, just basically you buy a phone when you need it, don't you? Yeah, exactly. Most people, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> or afford it, you know. Yeah, yeah, that's well, right. Well, I need I'm glad a new phone. Not, I get a new phone. Yeah. Yeah. What I'm glad about is that they're not cannibalising. You're right. Yeah, you know, because I do have an older phone. I can update my phone with the exact same iOS, you know, twelve. I'm doing the the beta thing at the moment, the beta testing with my iPhone and. You know, you can still use the older iPhones and their, their sales on their new ones are still going up. So that's great because I'm not going to, you know, trade up anytime soon while my phone still works perfectly besides a few little battery itch issues. Oh, you're not one of those people, are you? 
So, oh no, not that sort. Holding on to your phone just because it works all right. I know. God. Heaven forbid. I can't believe I haven't got the latest one. Yeah, the new one makes <laughs> it's coffee. Terrible. No one look at the success that I've got over there. <laughs> I've got the success plus. Ah. Oh. <laughs> That's got to be the best phone because it's just success. It is. It's just success, success, success. <laughs> Indeed. I yeah. think I will be in line for a new phone this year, though. Yeah. She'll let you, will she? <laughs> oh, I thought I was getting some brownie points last year for saying that I wasn't going to upgrade. I haven't upgraded yet. I, I don't know if I'm going to or not. I'm going to find out if I'm allowed well, to. <laughs> yes, that's right. You never know what's coming. Yep. Uh, now we are approaching show two fifty uh, with ad number one. So instead of having our friends at ATH Web Hosting, uh, we're approaching show two fifty. IT Help to You will be providing some iTunes slash Apple gift cards as prizes for listener stories, thoughts, and questions about the past, the present, and the future. So if anyone's got any ideas, any thoughts, any questions, yes. please, please share them because we're obviously bereft. <laughs> That's right. and opinions. We're, we're, we're running out of material, people. <laughs> That's, just send it to, to michael at aussiemaxzone.com.au and um, we'll, we'll start putting stuff together. Anything yeah. that you want to talk about, anything you want to say, um, five shows away from 250, which is pretty special. So we want to give away quite a few cards. Uh, yeah, if we can get get something going, that would be awesome, please. 250 <laughs> shows is a fair old number, isn't it? That's, that is. It's a, that's a good number. So we've got some comments, guys, after talking yeah. about upgrading our phones and stuff like that. So a, list, a, um, a listener here... Is, Persia Blythe, and she says, I upgraded from a Samsung S6 Edge to an iPhone 6 and regret it. She's joking. She's only because I couldn't bring my Google account over. Uh, why she, didn't why well, she you can. bring your Google account over? Or she do you can. mean the apps oh, no, she bought? She can bring a Google account over. I told her this. <laughs> <laughs> but she doesn't want to have... talking about the apps. <laughs> she doesn't want the hassle of doing that. and So... It's still... Oh, you sign in in one location and it just <laughs> populates everywhere for you. And it's so, so it's, easy. And anyway. so it's still in her, the phone's still registered to her hubby's iTunes account. I, I'm going over to sort of Persia's house tomorrow with my <laughs> yeah, children. Yeah, and yeah, if you know our, you, our children are going to play. You have a duty of care, huh? <laughs> That's right. A duty of care. That's right. Yeah, and so and, when I'm over there, I will set her up an iTunes account and everything like that, and set that all up for her. And make sure and get, Did you hear get that, the hubby as the Persia? family. It's, the, you've got the recorded to, evidence uh... <laughs> that I will do that for you. <laughs> get the family family sharing thing going as well. So yeah, you can use all the apps and um, yeah. There's a oh, what's it called? It's a paid app, I think. Um, a to Z, A to Z contacts, but they have a a Google Sync. Oh, bloody yeah. Google. That's what you did last week. Well. <laughs> so this is why you want to get away from your... I'm just going to unplug the cow. Yeah. It's good to see it's working. Yeah. Well, no, it doesn't Money work because well whenever I'm on here, I've, I've, un I've turned off its Wi-Fi so that I've got the internet and, uh, yeah, let me get connected to Wi-Fi. <laughs> Anyway, there's a really cool app you can get that will sync all your contacts and stuff like that as well. I'll, uh, Judy's send it asking to you later. if I'll come and set hers yeah. up as well. I would love to do that, Judy. We would love a holiday in Queensland. Um, <laughs> and if you're paying for me to come up there and do that, definitely. <laughs> uh, she'll work it out herself. Well, we'll just send Garth. He, he's probably with, almost within walking distance of there. So. I, I reckon they <laughs> almost would be. They both yeah, live in the same <laughs> suburb. Oh, Hello. no. Okay. Yeah, all right. No worries. I'll be there. Yes. Um, no, inbox by Gmail finally gains support for iPhone 10. So the inbox by Gmail app for iOS devices uh, this week updated with support for the iPhone 10, a full eight months after larger screen iPhone launch. 
Since November 2017, Inbox by Gmail has received 13 updates, none of which, none of which included iPhone 10 support until today. Inbox is one of Google's last apps to get iPhone 10 support, with most other apps updated earlier in the year. Uh, following the update, the Inbox by Gmail app will no longer display back black bars at the top and bottom of the app with your list of emails taking up the full length of the screen. There's also a um, slide for this one too, Zan. Uh, yep, I displayed the slide. Thank you, Michael. Thank you very much. According to Google's release notes, no other new features were included in the update. So all I did was paint a little bit of white paint across the top and bottom of the, the app. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> um, Google also updated its standard Gmail app for iOS, introducing support for high priority notifications for important messages. So good on them. And you can get that installed on Persia's phone as well while you're there. I, I, I will do. I'll do all of that. Yeah. <laughs> or not. Just... <laughs> now here comes that more from our friends at Google. Google. Oh, that's where he's unplugged. Hang on. <laughs> Hang on. It's not. It's bloody Aussie Mac zone, not Aussie Google zone. Yeah, but this one is Aussie Google. <laughs> okay. Google expands present in Australia with a new Melbourne office. Australia is one of the few countries that typically uh, include, Google includes in the first wave of product and service launches. Yes. With, a, with a new Melbourne location, the company has opened its second office to complement its headquarters in Sydney. Melbourne is Australia's second most populous city with the Collins Street office officially opening last Thursday evening. With space for more than 100 desks, half the building is already occupied. Google plans to further expand the team and welcome local community groups. Um, welcome local community groups? Yeah. Uh, so from just four people when Google Melbourne began a few years ago, we now have more than 50 staff today and, and space to expand the team. Awesome. We're growing because our partners, local businesses and community groups are growing. I'm not quite sure what the community groups are. No, that's got me a little bit curious. Yeah. We'll, yes. have to, um, we'll have to look up what the uh, community groups are with Google and Melbourne. Yes. Also find out Mate, if Mate they're is, expanding so, Melbourne, if they've sent anyone down from Sydney to, to fill those spaces. And if they have, do they need people to work with <laughs> Google Sydney because I'm available? <laughs> <laughs> But not tomorrow, because you're not helping Google out tomorrow. At yeah, that, that's point. right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just doing a quick search for this Google community. Excellent. Groups. So we'll just try and find out what they are. Uh, you can connect with people who share your interests by joining a public or private community. Uh, stay up to date with what's happening on your communities by seeing community posts in your stream. So it sounds like... Um, uh, that's just the old Google Groups thing, though, isn't it? It's just a web service, you know. Uh, oh, so that's just like chat rooms and stuff? Yeah. Email yeah. list. Google Groups do a lot of email. You know, you can mm -hmm. set up an email yeah. list on, on Google Groups. Oh, okay. But this sounds a bit different, you know, the in-person type thing. Like, yeah. I, yeah. Maybe, maybe they, they let let their rooms out for um, uh, like they have programmer nights and stuff like that. Oh yeah, yeah maybe. You know, I think they just wanted to be able to say it was community based because that sounds good. Yes, yeah. yeah. <laughs> like like that. Uh, there's a couple of places in Sydney I know that let rooms out at night for um, Mac admins to go to or. Uh, yeah. You know, those, those sort of things or MS SQL people to get together and just talk. And I know, that. yeah, there's similar stuff like that too in, um, because I listen to a lot of, you know, podcasts and stuff like that. In Chicago, they've got a podcast-based community um, centre sort of thing where they yeah, can go in yeah. and you go in and you pay a little bit of money to join the community and you can use the rooms and stuff like that to make podcasts. Yeah. And so... Yeah. It's a good idea, really. It is. It is a really good idea. Mm. If podcasts were more viable here, like because they're only just getting you know, sort of popular now, then it would be a great sort of venture to go into. Yes, yes. Mm. And now facial recognition trial takes off at Sydney Airport. 
Uh, Sydney Airport is teaming up with Qantas in a trial that uses your face to check in and board flights. So Sydney Airport announced last Thursday that it will begin trialling facial recognition technology in conjunction with Qantas in an effort to get passengers from the coach to the gate, from the couch to the gate much faster. (laughs) (laughs) That might be the bus from the front door. Oh, okay. (laughs) Need a coach to get off the couch at times. (laughs) That's right. (laughs) Especially with the parking out in Sydney. But anyway, um, your face will be your passport and your boarding pass at every step of the process. Sydney Airport uh, CEO explained in a statement, suggesting that in the future, you'll no longer need to bumble about in your coat pockets or bags searching for a passport because it will be right there on your face. So you stick it to your head like, <laughs> <laughs> like that card game. Um, the new technology is set to speed up check-in, bag drop, access to the lounge and boarding the plane. Australia's current system, SmartGate, is already using face scanning technology to electronically analyse passports of those travelling into and out of the country and Canberra Airport are currently trialling facial recognition software for international travellers. Now, Vanessa Hudson from Qantas Chief Customer Officer spoke to the need for airlines to be offering faster and more convenient airport experiences, stating that Qantas is excited to see what results the trial produces. So I think it's a good idea. I think Oh, hell yeah. I, I, yeah, it yes. is. Absolutely. I mean, <laughs> if the technology is there, right. You, you, you know, like you said, you, you are wearing your passport on your face anyway. Yeah, It's much improving, isn't it? And then it, yeah. you know, oh, well, I don't know, but yeah, it's my, my photo is pretty good. So yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if it's much improved. <laughs> the reality is probably a lot worse, <laughs> but no, it is. It's a great idea. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. I think it's okay. Yeah. But they were talking about uh, similar stuff. Uh, what was it for? Oh, that's right. Government. Um, uh, what is it? Like Centrelink stuff and things yeah. like that. So they were talking about using this similar technology for people who are on benefits and things like that. So their face recognition. So when you come into, um, I don't know what you do, like in Centrelink or whatever, they can you know, sort of scan your face and set that up and set you up ready, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I think even for things like, you know, I, I wouldn't be surprised if we, that's how we pay for stuff. You walk out of the checkout, you don't, there is no checkout as such. You just go and get the stuff you need. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And it knows who you are and that you've gone and got the stuff and you walked out and that's all it needs to know, you know? But just yeah. talk, talk, talking about that, like I've, I closed my NAB account and gone totally A and Z now and hardly use any cash at all. Yeah. Um, I use my watch because my watch, I've got just my personal account. So when I go shopping or buy a cup of coffee or whatever, I use my watch. Yeah. And when I buy my business stuff, I use my phone because that's the card that I've got both cards on my phone, but that's the card I probably use on my phone is, is my business account. Um, okay works brilliant yeah Yeah. so you can on the phone can you set a different card as default on each one or when you're on the phone you have to pick the other card uh when i'm on the phone yeah i'll pick the other card but it takes like it's just push 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 push, very good yeah 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 yeah. i I just wanted to comment comment as well uh kellyanne so they're also doing scripts and healthcare as well uh, in this way so that they can be able to do everything via you yeah, handheld device. Yeah. Oh, well, so, you want so. you want the right person to be getting the right drugs, don't you? So. Yeah. I reckon. Yeah. We're actually talking about this earlier before we started the podcast, Colleen and I, and um, talking about hackers using that system to uh, make fake scripts and things like that too. So, you know, hmm. I don't know. I, I do yeah. like easy technology and stuff like that. It's great fun, but this, the face recognition stuff and all that sort of stuff, I'm still, I don't know. I read too much. I, would, I watch too much sci-fi and read way too many comic books <laughs> that tell me otherwise that this isn't going to work. 
I, I know what you I know what you mean, but I think it's pretty easy to fake an actual written script as well. You know, like well, that's also true. A bit of paper, <laughs> like a piece yeah. of paper. Yeah. You've got you've got just as much, if not more, ability for humans to get in the equation and make an error. Yeah. Um. So just reduction in in error. Yeah. In pro, in you know, the human any any, look to be honest, anytime you can get a human not involved in the whole process. <laughs> You take a human out of the chain, you've improved the process. <laughs> you've improved the reliability in the yes <laughs> in, in most in most situations. Not all processes, obviously, but in most situations, you get yeah one less hands to take it in and push it out with their own spin on it. Then the better. The better. Yeah. Yeah. And they've even been demonstrating um, the last couple of weeks, like robot, not chefs, but cooks. You know, flipping the burgers and. It's just a pair of hands going boom, 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 and turn the egg over and crack the egg open. And so, where, that... do, you, where do you kids get part time jobs from then in the future? Uh, mechanics for robots. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> no, I look in the last however many hundred slash thousand years, there's always been jobs. The jobs just change. Yes, um, and change, when you sit in, in in a given situation, you look where's all this going to happen? Um, you know, you know what my kids are not going to get Judy. a job. Robots will take over. <laughs> they're they're not going to get part time jobs stoking the stoking the coal at a blacksmith or you know <laughs> wherever. <laughs> I know what you mean. I'm not, I'm not <laughs> saying that either. I'm just you know. You got to uh, roll with it. Yeah. I think, look, there are some valid concerns around all of that stuff yeah. that aren't just, it's changing. It, it, there is, yeah. The, oh, anyway, let's back to Aussie Max. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> let's, before we start getting into actual sci fi. <laughs> uh, now, a reminder this week, we are brought to you by Aussie Tech Radio, www.aussietechradio.com. We've got our uh, longest running Australian tech podcast our award-winning Aussie Tech Heads podcast. There's also Aussie Tech Crypto podcast. Uh, there's My Tech Opinion and, and other podcasts from around Australia. So just put it in, plug it, keep listening. It's great. You'll always learn something from listening. You just pick up this this and that when you've got it playing in the background and it's better than listening to crap TV or just crap ordinary radio with 400,000 ads going all the time. So. That's all. That's what I've found like with normal radio lately. There's way too many ads and not enough, you know, decent yeah. music and stuff. That's yeah. why now I just run, you know, uh, Apple <laughs> Music in the car and stuff too. Like, because you, you can't even get it, you know, in, they say that they're going to play a, a block of music for, you know, they do the 90 minutes to nonstop rock. And yeah. it's like, you know, 17 <laughs> minutes of music and yeah. <laughs> <laughs> was it yeah, I, eighty-three yeah. minutes of ads. Yeah. <laughs> I'll talk about ads later, but um, now another story. IBM lands seven hundred and forty million dollar deal to supply data security to Australia. That's seven hundred and forty US, one billion Australian uh, agreement to become a central technology partner partner of the Australian government over the next five years. The contract will see services such as automation and blockchain provided to federal departments, including defence and home affairs. IBM's Asia-Pacific head, Harriet Green, said in an interview with Bloomberg on Thursday, the use of the technology and the employment Australians to support and help make implementation will be hallmarks of the new partnership, she said. IBM, which is combating falling revenues will also create renewed platforms to protect citizens' data while providing $100 million in savings to taxpayers, according to government estimates. Cyber attacks have hit international firm, firms such as Facebook and Ticketmaster in the past year, as well as Australia's National Science Agency. Now, the contract comes two years. We always worry about this bit. The contract comes two years after IBM agreed to pay more than $30 million in compensation to the Australian government for its role in the bungled national census. The survey was hit by four distributed denial of service attacks that temporarily shut down the twice a decade project. And Prime Minister Turnbull said at the time that overwhelming 
Unfortunately, the failure was IBM's. So it'll be interesting to see what what happens over the next five five years. We should see a massive turnaround in in information, should we not? Yeah. So with with that too, like with, you know, we're talking about the crashes and stuff like that with the census. Yeah. Um, uh, is it just better the devil we know? Have they gone with IBM because they're like, oh, they've done all of this before. You know, it's easier to just pay these guys than to find someone else. Or, you know, I think I think it's because of the size and scope. There's not many companies around that can actually do it. No, that's right. Fair enough. <laughs> yeah. um, you look how many years it took them just to work out who was going to build some boats down in Adelaide. Like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and now. Uh, now, also, I hope some of the uh, technology rubs off in our next story because Chinese hackers breach Australian National University, pushing putting national security at risk. The Sydney Morning Herald reported Chinese, ba- I don't know how they know it's Chinese-based hackers, have successfully infiltrated the IT systems at the Australian National University, potentially compromising the home of Australia's leading national security college and key defence research projects. Federal government cyber security f- officials have been working with the university since detecting the cyber attack, assessing the scale of information theft and who in China could be responsible for it. The ANU conducts research that has defence, strategic, scientific, technological and commercial applications. And national security sources say that the Chinese government was suspected of directing the cyber attack but proving this may be difficult because hackers typically aim to hide their tracks. However, it has been confirmed by federal government officials that the cyber attack was launched from China mm. and that the ANU computer network was significantly compromised. Now, we can assume this cyber intrusion has involved the theft of information. The question is, what was sucked out and how sensitive is it, said the national security official. The official said the cleanup by university staff and cyber security officials would also aim to safeguard the ANU's uh, from future attacks. Now, yeah, I accept, all right, they're mm-hmm. saying China breached it. Um, but like they say, how do they know it didn't really come from Russia, but they were going through routers in China? That's, you know. <laughs> Who, so yeah, I, that, I don't know. Was I don't this, know. Would you say Daily Telegraph? Mm-hmm. No, nah, Sydney Morning Herald. Sydney Morning Herald. Daily Telegraph, Sydney Morning Herald. <laughs> mm, anyway. Um... <laughs> yeah, because it's like, that, that's the idea. In the old days, you used to... They're saying China because we're having, well, not conflict with China, but we're, we're discussing terms with China at the moment and what they're doing over, you know, in the, in the islands regions. Yeah. And, you know, we've, yeah. Got, we've got warships over there and they've got <laughs> warships there and so... To sensationalise this news, <laughs> it's better if yeah. they say Chinese hackers because they, you're right; they could be coming from Russia and using, you know, Chinese like, routing through China. But yeah. to sensationalise this news, it's better to hear it that it's coming from there. My, Possibly, or, opinion, or they may anyway. just know that it is Chinese hackers because of the particular, <laughs> the particular way it was done, or you know, yeah. whatever they've actually found. However, they found it's been done. Yeah. Yeah. What what we really need to know, well. I guess they need to know everything about it, really, but what they really need to know is how much, like I was saying, how much has been actually compromised. Yeah, and what, what is the saying? actual scope of it? That's, yeah, yeah, because yeah, um, we don't want to find out in loss. a year's time that um, no. something, something that Australia could have made money from is now being sold on eBay from China for yeah for twenty seven cents. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's right. Yeah. So um, that that's it for the sort of the st- most of the stories. I've got a couple of little ones coming up, but um, anything else people want to bring up before I get on to this week in Apple history? I can't wait to get to week- this week in Apple history. I love that. <laughs> Actually, I really enjoy that too. <laughs> Just to be honest here, I really like it because we're always talking about you know, some computer that I remember when I was a kid and I get all excited. You know, it's a bit nostalgic. It's, it's, it's a nice right. segment, Michael. <laughs> This week in Apple history, everybody, 1981, 1981, that far back. Apple's first president, Michael Scotty Scott, 
resigns after four and a half years of helping establish the company's infrastructure and guiding the firm through an enormously successful initial public offering. Uh, but Scott's fate was sealed after an unpopular Black Wednesday firing of 40 employees and termination of several unproductive hardware projects in the wake of the disappointing Apple III. Uh, in 1992, a Belgian board Gaston Bastiens is named VP and General Manager of Apple's newly formed Personal Interactive Electronics Division, which included the Newton Project. But unfortunately, he came to uh, sorry he came to Apple from Philips Electronics in the Netherlands, where he'd been director of consumer electronics division and general manager of interactive media, helping launch the Philips CD interactive player. But he left Apple less than a year after the Newton message pad finally shipped in two thousand and one. He was he was arrested for security violations during his tenure and CEO and president of Lerno Haspi speech products. Uh, really? That's <laughs> fascinating. I hadn't heard that last bit there. Oh. No. Um, didn't actually Philips, were they the ones who actually made, who, who did it? Because Apple outsourced the production of that, Newton. Yeah, no, that was too sharp. Sharp, was it? Okay. Yeah, right. yeah. We talked about that last week. We did. That's you know, why I know. That's, right, that's why you know, because you were watching. <laughs> yeah, I, I knew I heard something like that. <laughs> 1999, blowing away analyst estimates, Apple boasts, posts a profit of $230 million for its seventh consecutive profitable quarter. Almost half the income comes from the sale of 10 million shares of ARM Holdings, which Apple acquired in conjunction with this development of the Newton. Apple sold almost a million max representing unit growth of 40%, spurred in large part due to the demand of the iMac, which accounted for more than half of the units sold in the quarter. Now, that was 1999. And just two years later, after taking a pounding for the last couple of quarters, largely for the failure of the Power Mac, Apple managed to post a $61 million profit for that quarter. We had a great education quarter with a significant year and a great iBook quarter, shipping over 100, 182,000 of our new, widely popular consumer education notebooks, Steve Jobs said. But perhaps the most strategic event of the quarter was the launching of Apple retail stores with the very successful openings of the first two stores and planned to open 23 more in 2001. 2002, Macworld Expo in New York, Apple announces a slew of new products, including Mac OS X and iMac, Dot Mac Online, formerly called iTools, iTunes 3, new generation iPods, and most significantly, the new iPods are available for the first time to both Mac and Windows customers. 2003, Apple announces financial results for its third quarter um, with a net profit of only 19 million compared to a net profit of 32 a year previous. Um, but revenues for the quarter were up 8%. <laughs> um, Apple shipped 771,000 max during the quarter. So there we go. Uh, was the that, new third year on it, sorry, yeah. The, the the point at which they made iPods, well, iTunes work on, on Windows. Yeah. And, you know, allow Windows users to be able to get iPods. Yeah. Is that is that decision what turned it around for, in the long run, for Apple? Yeah, probably. Yeah, if you were, had to nail it down to one thing. One thing? Yes, yeah, probably yeah. that one. <laughs> Didn't matter how long they fought for it. Because those a lot of those Windows users started buying Macs too, didn't they? Yeah, yeah. Well, I, I got into the Apple world because of an iPod Shuffle <laughs> <laughs> that my work workplace gave me. Yeah. Um, if I hadn't, you know, as a whatever, whatever it was. Um, so without that entry, I don't think you know would I be 
would I be spent? Would I have spent all this money on Apple products at this point? I don't know. Yeah. Uh, would there be any Apple at this point? I think I yeah. got into the same. I think I'm the same guy. I think I got into Mac via the shuffle. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. I so just... when they when they opened it up and said, not only can you Mac owners get an iPod Shuffle. Or whatever it was when they said when you know brought iTunes to Windows. Yeah, and, and uh, geez, it was glitchy. Oh, it was bloody awful! <laughs> it was horrible. But once it got onto your iPod Shuffle, you didn't care. No, that's right. Yeah. And you yeah. had the the podcast syncing, and it was great. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now, um, just a couple of little stories before we go. Twitterific loses push notifications and live updated tweets ahead of Twitter's third-party API purge. Um, we've known for a few months this is coming, but starting August 16 when it rolls out, um, but now we are starting to see the effects of those upcoming changes. Uh, Twitterific uh, preparing for the removal of two major features, push notifications and live updating. So, yeah, that's one little story. And another little story here, Microsoft Outlook to release the highly anticipated dark mode. So this is different to the dark mode in Mojave. Microsoft Outlook will be releasing their dark mode and administrative user. We've actually been working on dark mode for a few months now and expect the product soon, said the post. One reason for the delay is our insistence that we deliver the best dark mode for any looting email client. You'll understand when you see it, I guarantee. Dark mode is an aesthetic choice for many users, but also makes nighttime use easier on the eyes since it puts the entire interface into a darker color, uh, darker color palette, sorry. So it will be available for Windows, Mac OS, Android, and iOS. Individual Office applications have dark themes available. This is the first one for Microsoft Outlook. Right. Do you guys care? Uh, what is don't dark you mode have... a thing that you care? Like, is it? Is it? Well, yeah. Yeah. yeah? Okay. Yeah. Um, I don't use Outlook, but yeah, I'm looking forward to using dark mode. Yeah. Because yeah. um, I do a lot of a lot of computing stuff at night. Yeah. Um, yeah, uh, whereas Renee Ritchie, which is from iMore and, uh, yeah. you know, um, MacBreak Weekly, etc., he says that if he has it on all the time during the day, it, it gets, because he's using Mojave at the moment. Um, right, yep. Yeah, he says it gets like it gets a bit depressing because you're just looking at black all the time. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, Fair enough, yeah. yeah. You got any blacker. <laughs> Yeah. And then, you know, you can be plugged. You've got to think about, all right, so now I've got to redo my website so that there's a dark mode and a light mode. Do you know what people yeah. in dark mode go, oh, I can help you, and then bounce up into Bounce and it's bright. Yeah. Judy says it's so also better for that your eyes. browser Michael. can check for that. As a, as a website, can you, is that part of the header then, I guess? Or yeah. Yeah. Say, hey, this, this, this person's using dark mode at the moment. So yeah, it'll need respect to, yeah. that. Yep. Yeah. And uh, sorry, Michael. Um, yeah. And so go. Judy also said it's better for your eyes, Michael. Uh, probably is eventually, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Why is that? <laughs> yeah. I just, yeah, because my eyes have been suffering a bit lately after my two operations. <laughs> mm. But yeah, I'm using um, baby soap to wash my face face and hair every day now and that made a difference to helping my eyes in the mornings so so, so tiny little pieces of soap to wash your face yes that's right <laughs> crikey jeez sorry well that's it you're not allowed to use the androids an apple a day keeps androids away now you've, uh, you've used your bad joke anyway. come on uh, I, I, I do have a question for everyone out there because I was yes. going to um, contact Gruen uh, the ABC sh show about advertising for this one, but because um, <laughs> we're talking about advertising a little bit earlier, I, I'm yeah. confused about advertising. So I don't understand why commercial TV stations advertise 
Stan and Netflix and Foxtel. Because they get paid to. So what? They don't, they don't, <laughs> they don't advertise. Channel 9 doesn't advertise Channel Seven shows. Yeah, that's right. So, so why why do you actually and, and like you market. don't go to a you don't go to a Ford dealer and see a Holden poster? That's true. Right. But, um, you don't go into Coles and see Woolworths advertising. Yeah. The direct com the direct com competitors though. No, direct. they're not. They're not so direct competitors. Netflix and Stan. I know they are in the same market. They but they're they not, will they're not hey? because they will still make their money through advertising, even though. We go watch Stan and Netflix because Stan and Netflix don't have advertisement. Yeah. So by them, by Stan and Netflix, well, this is what I'm saying. Yeah, paying yeah. them to advertise it literally gives uh, free to air TV money to keep them going. And so if they got money to keep them going, nah. they can still run their shows. No, nah, the thing that keeps keeps you going is I, what, supplying no, a service what... that people want to watch. <laughs> or is it money? Well, because, well, uh, because no, it seems to it, be, it keeps, that doesn't seem to be the case. Lying ads on their service. ABC yeah. is losing money out the wazoo and they're putting on things that people want to watch, but the government keeps taking it away. So, <laughs> nah, but. Um, it's the stuff, yeah. Yeah, I just, I, I just. So, seven and nine, that. right? They're, they're, there's <laughs> too much history there. They're never going to advertise each other. You know, yeah. they, they are in a direct for the market. Um, Stan, all these this pay for streaming services, they're, they're slightly they're a different market. They're a different product. They're a on demand pay for service compared yeah. to service. So yes, it's you know it's going to hurt them because more and more people are just going to go like I like we did. We don't watch any live and. Don't no upstairs TV doesn't even do it. I guess you can do it through the Apple TV, I suppose. Yeah, Netflix. That's all we watch because we don't watch that much TV anyway. Yeah, um, yeah. But yeah, I, they're they're a different market though. There's shows you can only get on Channel Nine and Channel Seven that you have to watch yeah. them for. Like yeah. at the moment, they've got um, Australian Ninja Warrior on Channel Nine, and you can really? only get it, you can only get it on Channel Nine. You can only watch it there. Can't watch it anywhere else. So Channel Nine and their it's, sports. It's already in one too many places by the time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, true. Sorry, this is Alan's favourite show. Here. <laughs> it's yeah, not I'll, my I'll favourite show by, <laughs> by far, but um, yeah, you know. But yeah, but, point you know, And Channel Nine have been known, you know, for sport. Well, since I can remember, the da, 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 you know, the music. Welcome to the MZG. Yeah. So, yeah, I think yeah. Anyway, yeah, it's uh, like but they just yeah, you know, they just lost the cricket, didn't they? And that, uh, yeah. <clears throat> but yeah, I just um, I just don't understand that. For now, that's all I've got. Now I'm just going to do our wrap up. Anyone got anything? Well, we don't really do rumors on here too much, but it seems to be in the last week or so a lot of different indications that we're going to get a whole raft of products in the next little while, isn't there? Yes. Yes. And new, new Macs all over the place and multiple versions of phones. And so we could end up having quite a, quite an exciting September, I reckon. Yeah. It'd be a shame if they release yeah. everything at the same time. Cause, but um, yeah. <laughs> Cause we won't be able to afford all of it at the same That's time. Right. <laughs> Absolutely yeah. right. Yeah. yeah. Um, we're going to be quite poor. Yeah. Just to start yeah. preparing, preparing the, uh, the significant others for the fact that they, they're not getting anything things. for Christmas. That's right. We've had a, we've had a seller child. You know? So win-win, really. Yeah. It's okay. The circus said they'd take care of him. Um, so don't forget uh, with our show notes link each week on our upload and don't forget you can search spotify for aussie max zone you can search aussie news for aussie max zone uh now i do believe like i know i had some issues last week trying to upload a show variation which i think is the itunes video edition 
our, our hosting service changed to a beta version for uploading and I couldn't put it in the same folder. So I wasn't quite sure what was going on there. So, um, but now thank you to our sponsors this week being IT help for you, uh, sorry, IT help to you. That's right. Yeah. Do you know the name and, of this company? Geez, you know yeah. how much that guy's paying you to do that, Adam? I reckon. Geez, I think you funny. can at least get it right. <laughs> IT help to you. I'm telling the CEO. <laughs> and and AussieTechRadio.com and our supporters, which is the most important people, you, our listeners. That's thank right. you very, very much. Thank you very much, Garth, for Thanks, being Garth. Thank you, guys. Thanks to everyone thank on you, Facebook. You thank you, Michael. Thanks, everyone, yeah, thank that's been chatting to us guys, and sending us in uh, <laughs> comments and questions and stuff like that the last few weeks. It's been really fun. Keep it up. I love it. It's great. Absolutely <laughs> love it. Yeah. Thank you so much. <laughs> hey, hey, Garth. Um, before we go, did you know an apple a day keeps the androids away? Yeah. <laughs> I have heard that. I have heard that. I have. But I think... <laughs> uh. <laughs> but, uh, I, I haven't had an apple for quite... <laughs> I was trying to think of something, all right, and I just couldn't come up with it. <laughs> I'll have something ready for next Winner. next next week. I'll have something ready. Next <laughs> yeah. All right. Thanks, everybody. All the best. <laughs> Thank you. All right. All right. Thank you, Garth. There we go. Thanks, guys. That was fun. I apologise for Zan's humour. <laughs> oh, no, no, no. It's great. I love his humour. I can poke fun at it then. <laughs>